It's time! It's time for Terry Green! Oh my, this is a long time coming. Alright, anyway, uh... Welcome to Past the Rings, Volume 81! I think I found a spot in my new house to do this thing. Alright, so, um... We're talking about the Terry Green 12-inch LP titled... LP. Uh, really cool cover art. Uh, it was released on August 24th? Yes. August 24th of 2017 on Zegba Beach, Zilp Zalp, Upwind, and R.I.P. in Peace Recordings. Or re Records, sorry. Uh, I think the only active labels are the bottom two still, but don't quote me. Um, we did 200 copies on black. Uh, I believe the No Funeral crew, uh, Megan, Berto, and um, Nate did the stamping of the A and B sides. And I'm pretty sure the band did the insert themselves, just a single-sided black blank piece of paper. But to the history, holy moly, there's a history. Uh, I've definitely mentioned it before in other Terry Green episodes for Out Past the Rings that we were very tight. Uh, so let's kind of uh, go back to the beginning because this is most definitely the biggest of their releases, at least thus far. Uh, so number one, Super, super important for Zegan Beach Records. Uh, whether you know it or not, this band goes back to almost the very beginning of the label. Um, and I'm already getting ahead of myself. So let's, uh, let's begin, shall we? In 2014, I started to try to put on shows. Uh, I'd already started the label. I was doing the blog. I was going to shows anyway, uh, and I eventually started to have people ask me to put on a sh put on shows. So the first show I put on was you know, uh, congratulations, life in vacuum, sketchbooks, and I might be missing someone else. Uh, the kettle black maybe played. I don't know. Uh, anyway, the point of the story here is that Sketchbooks was kind of the lone, screamy, hardcore band in the Hamilton area in Ontario. Uh, and after that show, they broke up. So I was kind of like, oh no, who do I choose now? So I was looking around, trying to figure out what bands from Hamilton kind of played music that I liked. So I stumbled across Dinosaur Sex Change, which were a bunch of 15 and 16-year-old kids uh, who I would... I asked to play a couple of shows. I'm like, this is the closest thing that I can get in the Hamilton area. Uh, the kids were always carted coming in, needed consent from their parents to like, uh, come into the show and stuff because it was in a bar. Uh, and those were some of the best shows in terms of uh, uh, money coming in for the touring bands because the parents and everyone always paid when they came in. Uh, they didn't have to, but they did. They always paid, and, um, you know, there'd be, like, 10 to 15 of them, so, you know, early on in the Zegma show days, it was really hard to get people to come out in Hamilton. Holy moly. Um, okay, so th that kind of led me to, like, really, really scour and search and keep my ears open for any band in the Hamilton or surrounding area that might fit uh, on the, like, the show bills that I was trying to do. Um, don't get me wrong, I like shows with, with different acts, but I, I really wanted, like, someone uh, that that fit what I was trying to bring in. So I could at least have, like, one band uh, every, like, two or three shows, but, like, yeah, this is what I want to bring in as well, uh, very specifically. So, um, their first show, I don't remember, I think I just found them online, and I don't remember how, Screamo Ontario or something, like, not that that was a group, I just, like, typed in Screamo Ontario. Hamilton, and uh, Terry Green showed up, so I contacted them and asked them to come out uh, for a show in October of 2000, I want to say 14, I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on this, uh, and that show was with Animal Faces, Worst Gift, My Dad, and Quiet Lakes, so like, in retrospect, that's a pretty good show. There was no one there! Nobody was there! I remember Animal, Places, Animal Faces played for me and I think one other paying customer at that point. It sucked. But I got to meet Terry Green. Uh, I got to see a really sick show. Um, and kind of from then on, I latched onto them. 
it was kind of just like, hey, I've got a show. Do you want to play? So if you look through, like the, I don't even know, 20 or 30 shows that I put on in Hamilton, uh, they are on half the bills. Like, <laughs> no doubt about it. I asked them pretty much every time, and the ones they didn't play were ones they were like, oh, we can't play that week or that day or whatever. So uh, without a doubt, the number one Zegma Beach go-to for the entire time that I was in Hamilton. Um, even when I was in a band, The World That Summer, I didn't matter. I was still asking Terry Green to come out because, number one, they were absolutely fantastic. And number two, they were amazing people. Uh, it worked out really, really well. Uh, every time they would play a show, people would, you know, come out. Uh, whether, I remember my partner Lisa, I remember my brother Mike, I remember at least two of my friends who had never heard of the band just coming to the show, watching the whole show, and they tell me afterwards, oh my god, Terry Green was amazing. Holy moly. And I'd, after a while, I became quite aware that this kept happening. So, uh, you know, I, I watched them grow from a very twinkly emo band, although I guess kind of the five-song demo, five-song? The demo uh, does have um, some heavier moments. I think I, like, like them to Alexis on Fire or something nearly um, early on in the beginning. Uh, they... Okay, there's so much information here. Um, they had the demo, and then we had already done the split. So the split with Huge Cosmic had come out, uh, I guess, like a year, a year and a half prior to the 12-inch, uh, this 12-inch. And one of the songs, uh, Instant Relief, is track four. So track four on the 12-inch has a demo version, which is, in my opinion, really good, uh, on the Huge Cosmic split. So that song used to be called Instant Relief. Uh... I think it's track one. One of the songs used to be called Michael Soft Sam. It's one or two. And then I think uh, three used to be called Rick Rubin. So th there were ten like tentative titles uh, before they scrapped the tentative titles. And were like, we're going with just the numbers. And this album is called LP, which I'm, I'm all for. And I, I, I like remembering that they used to have those other songs. Because, uh, for example, Michael Soft Sam was first premiered on uh, Zampler. So literally the first time... Uh, a lot of people heard that song. It had a different title, but um, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here because uh, uh, not many people, I feel like, really grasped onto this when it first came out, but you know, we'll get there. Uh, so they were playing all the shows. Um, they also did Door um, and just were always really sweet, um, weren't asking for money or demanding money before playing and stuff like that. Um, just, I don't know. I love those guys. They're they're great. Uh, all of them and their partners. I've got pictures of them when they came over to do... Uh, I don't even remember which one it was. Adrian came over for a podcast one night. The band came over for an inter video interview. Uh, they were part of a mini documentary. Uh, but they'd never seen Aliens. Uh, the movie Aliens. And that's my number one movie. Even above Starship Troopers. So I brought them all over and uh, we ate food and had merry times and watched the movie and so forth and it was uh it was awesome so i i really do um out of all the bands that i've been able to do stuff with they're definitely the top of like these are my friends and they're in a really good band that i get to put music out for so that's sick so i remember them asking me to help release this i'd already done this stuff before i kind of had seen them progress to heavier and more, much more technical uh, stuff. I guess I should liken them to some bands. The ones that usually come to mind are Van Johnson. Uh, not just because of the Canada thing, because it's pretty groovy. I guess there's a bit of Fall of Troy going, going on in there. I know um, I was told that that was an influence early on, at least. Uh, Jillian Carter, uh, maybe even Daniel Stripe Tiger, that kind of stuff. Playful, semi-mathy, emo-screamo. Not heavy, but, you know, <laughs> you can't go show your parents and be like, hey, listen to this, and they're like, oh, that sounds great. Is that how your parents talk? Uh, mine are British, so it's definitely not how mine talk. Uh, all right, so at this point, we put it in the plant. There was a deal on the 200, so uh, we did that, but there was a delay for whatever reason. I remember it went in at the same time as Saren, and I know for sure that Saren's did 
uh, did not come in time for their release show. So they had a release show with no 12 inches, and I'm quite sure that this is the exact same thing happened to Terry Green. Uh, they had something planned in, I think, September or something like that, and uh, the records just didn't show up in time. So that was a big bummer uh, for both of those bands, but um, I know for sure that all of the Terry Greens are now sold out. By the way, there was also tapes made by Sean at Middleman Records. i got to assume those were sold out uh, as well. I have a copy myself for, of one of those. Um... Uh, where else am I going here? Uh, they played the first ZBR Mini Fest, which was nice. Um, that was before all the 12 inch, and then after the 12 inch, the the last thing we kind of did together was um, was the ZBR Fest, the one in Toronto right before I left to go to New Zealand. Uh, I guess the last thing that um, has happened recently was I went back to Ontario two years ago for New Friends Fest and to see my uh, New Friends Fest two and to see my family. Um, I guess it should be the other way around, but that's not how I tell the story. Ah! Uh, it's okay, my family doesn't watch this. So, uh, I... What was happened there? I found out that they were playing a show uh, in Guelph, where I went to university, and I surprised them at the show. And I remember, like, like I would... I think they thought I was still in New Zealand or something at the time. So I, uh, you know, surprised the the hell out of them, and uh, I asked, uh, hey, we've got this four-way split series, uh, it's going to be five, seven inches that we're doing with the Ghost is Clear Records, would you please contribute a new, it's got to be a new song uh, on there, and they were, they looked and they're like, oh yeah, we'll try to figure something out, so I remember Adrian saying, let's pull the short song from the LP, so uh, they're definitely, were definitely, was they were they were definitely writing uh, an LP, and I was told in passing, no, I was told uh, that this is not going to get a repress. Um, the new record might get finished and will likely be the final material. Uh, and after ten years, uh, they might consider a repress of the uh, of the LP. So I. Let's, I, I don't know. It's already been five or six years, so I, I this, no, it hasn't been. It's 2017, too. It's been, it's been almost five years, so we're already halfway there. I could wait another five years for that. Uh, it is totally worth it. I waited a good many years for this, uh, constantly singing their praises. Um, like I said, when it came out, I don't really, uh, Zebra was still really unstable at that point. It was pretty much uh, held up by a few people who liked the label, uh, in particular, the members of Terry Green, who would always buy from the distro and definitely help support fund their own record. Um, but uh, due to time and just enough people sharing it, I mean, this record has been shredded enough that it sold out and kind of then some. I get messages pretty often about, like, do you have any more Terry Green 12 inches? And the answer is always, no, I don't. Uh, but I would like to have some more at some point. Uh, definitely worth checking out if you have not heard it. Uh, the earlier material is still very good, but they really nailed it on this thing. It's it's amazing. You've got just four absolute bangers, and then kind of like a interlude song, which is more than an interlude or anything like that. It's a full-on song still. And then you've got the eight-minute closer, six. Um, you, you can't go wrong. It's so good. So uh, check it out. I just put it back on for free. There are no copies for sale, and uh, why don't uh, you come take a trip down memory lane with me and we'll take a look, look at, at the wee ones aka a young terry green at their first show <laughs> 